guys, thanks for coming to check out this video where I'm about to set up my Yemen weeklies in my bullet journal for the month of May. But before I get started, I want to choose the countries for next month, which is June. Can't believe it, my favorite month, my birthday month. So let's hope we get some good choices. Well, let's go. So the first one is the biggest countries. And we will spin them all about. And we're pulling out Malaysia. Mm, that would be cool. And then the next one is medium countries. Let's see what we can get. That one, Chile. Cool, that's fun to say. <laughs> I don't know if it's Chile or Chile, but we'll just call it Chile for now. <laughs> and then the third one is our smallest countries. Do, 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 do. And we have Wales. Oh, I remember people requesting Wales. That would be cool too. All right, guys, so they are our choices. I'm really happy with them. We've got Malaysia, Chile, and Wales. So if you want to see one of those next month, don't forget to leave your vote down in the comments after you've watched the video. And for now, I'll put the others back into the jars. And thank you, Yemen. You are awesome. And now let's get started with the weeklies. So first, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who shared their lovely comments on the last video where I did the Yemen setup for the rest of this month. I really appreciate those words and that you appreciate the depth that I go into in these. Um, obviously, I'm no historian, but I'd like to investigate um, things. And yeah, I'm just glad that you guys appreciate it. So it really means a lot to me. So thank you for all those lovely comments. And now we will continue on with our Yemen adventure. So the first week I decided to do this beautiful building that is nestled between a whole bunch of the typical sort of village that you do see in Yemen which is all that mud brick so it's all very neutral surrounding it and then there's just this pop of almost pastel colors all painted in a grid work on this building it's called the Kayla Bookshan Palace and it's located in the Wadi Doan I think it's the village of Kayla. It's really tricky to find out exactly where these places are because there's so many different names and spellings for each place. So I hope I don't have that wrong, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's in the Wadi Doan, which is like a, the desert, the area, and then the village is Kayla. Um, but anyway, I just saw this building and I just thought it looked awesome against all that neutral background and then this pop of color. So I thought it might be interesting to work with um, that color of the background. That mud brick is like a craft paper. So I used some craft paper to start my artwork and then I just sketched in sort of a close up of some buildings and kept them all very blank around it but then just used my Posca paint pens to bring to life one building in the center. Um, so you'll see me adding in some blue, there's pinks and purples and yellows. It's such a cool building. And it's actually used, it's called the palace because it was um, the family, Bookshan family's palace originally. I think it was built in 1955, but it hadn't actually been painted like this until quite recently in the, I think it was 2006. And then it became a hotel. So there's this is now a hotel where you can stay. And then the top level is dedicated to a committee that brings about development for Kayla itself. So a very cool building and I just really wanted to draw it to be honest. I've used my white pen to really make it pop off of the page and tried to reset everything else around it um, by just showing the shadowed side of the buildings. And in case you're wondering what I used for those buildings for the shade, it's a Faber-Castell artist pen, a brush pen, and it's in the shade cinnamon, which is quite appropriate I feel. <laughs> Um, so that worked out really nice. It just made a perfect comparison with the craft paper. So that was all the highlighted sides and then used the texture on the darker sides. Um, so really fun technique if anybody wants to try it. Another little trick here that I'm doing is I didn't have a lot of Posca pens. I think I only have four different colors. So when I didn't have the right color, what I did was just use my white Posca pen first and then use a marker on top. So it didn't matter whether it was water-based or alcohol based I think they both worked fine I just chose the right color and then went over the top so it's just coloring that paint that you've already laid down so that was a handy little tip if anyone does want to try this and they don't want to buy a bunch of different Posca pens if you've got a white you can create other colors I'm just finishing off with the white pen adding little bits of detail on that building it does have all these beautiful ornate little accents on the top levels so I tried to add that in for a bit of extra interest and then once it was complete I cut this out in the shape of my page so I had to keep that little left tab because of the back of the divider for the first weekly page 
So I sliced that up and then stuck it into the journal using my glue tape. So then for my first weekly page, I just used that same Pit Artist pen to add some color to the rest of the spread um, where I'm putting my days of the week. So this is where I write all of my agenda, my to-do lists, and I kind of do a little bit of time blocking in these areas. So I just allow a space for each day. Then I just title each day with a little bit of calligraphy and number my dates. And then I'm using my new stamp that I got from No Issue that I mentioned in my last video. I'm loving it already because I did start using it and checking off my water intake each day. And so far, um, it's probably because it's new and fresh for me, but it's actually working. So I've stayed hydrated the last couple of days. So let's hope it continues to work. So I just use that stamp on each day. And then when I have a glass of water, I color in one of the little ice cubes. So the next weekly spread, I decided to focus my attention on a bridge that brings tourists from far and wide to come and see its breathtaking beauty. It is made of limestone and it connects two mountain ranges. It's 20 meters long, three meters wide and 200 meters above a gorge. So amazing feat to achieve. This was built in the 17th century and it still boggles the mind even now to how they actually achieved this. Um, there's legends about how it was built, whether bridges were built beneath it and then sort of to help lift up the limestone to get there. Um, but apparently the architect who designed this actually ended up going mad um, because of how amazed he was at the creation that he had built. Um, so I found that very interesting to read, um, but it is, it is amazing. I am still, the mind is boggled to how they create something like this. Um, but yeah, so this is still standing today. It brings tourists. It's called the Shahara Bridge, or also known as the Bridge of Sighs. And it connects the town of Shahara, which has been mentioned since the 10th century. So it's been around a long, long, long time. It's completely walled off. And the only way you can get into the town is via this bridge. Now I didn't realize, but one of the earliest civilizations recorded is actually from Yemen and the inhabitants of the mountain ranges on both sides to get supplies for their village, they would have to take this massive trek that went down one mountain and then up the other, get supplies and come back. But not many of them were strong enough to survive that kind of thing. So everyone would have to go without supplies and it was just not sustainable. So then in the 1600s, the leader of the Shahara village ordered this bridge to be constructed. And yeah, it's still, not known how it was actually constructed, um, but it's just quite a wondrous thing that is living right there in Yemen. So definitely on the bucket list to see that one. It just reminds me of something you'd find in Lord of the Rings or Indiana Jones. It's just incredible. And this page, I've gone back to my just my basic black and gold. I didn't want to use any color on this one. I didn't think it was needed. So I just kind of enhanced the, or to show the limestone, I used just touches of gold across the stairs um, and the bridge itself and then just used that to grid up my page for the week. And here comes my shining mistake for the week. <laughs> it was using my stamp. I didn't check that it was upright. I just went ahead and stamped and it turns out it was not, it was upside down. So I was like, ah, seriously? So I fixed that by just putting a couple of white stickers over the top and then using a little bit of white um, paint pen or even white gel pen would have worked. And then I re-stamped the correct way up. <laughs> So here's how this page turned out and then we are ready to move on to the third week. The first is here on the left hand side where I'm creating a typically ornate window that looks out onto the town of Shabam. Shabam is an old walled city built in the 16th century and it's known for its mud brick skyscrapers. It's often referred to as the Manhattan of the desert. It's such an impressive sight to see because it's honestly like these just sandcastles. They look like sandcastles that go vertically into the sky and it's just an entire walled town of them and then surrounded by desert and date palms. And yeah, just a really incredible sight to see. So I wanted to show that, but I thought I would show it in a um, sort of a different perspective rather than another distance shot of a city, just because I had done that in the last couple of spreads. I wanted to mix it up a little bit. Um, and I definitely wanted to use that cinnamon texture again. So I'm using that to portray all that sandiness and that desert vibe. Um, and then hopefully kind of show the aspects of that skyscraper city through the window. 
So because Shabam is one of the oldest and best examples of urban planning based on multi-storied construction, I thought it best to include it in these spreads. And I really like how it turned out, having a little bit of a different look to the page. And by designing it like this on the page, it allowed me to keep uh, a few little boxes that were like windows for my days of the week. So my Monday and Tuesday can go on that left-hand page um, and it's sort of part of the image itself, which I quite like. I chose to keep the colors very minimal on this page, but I did want a little pop of blue in there just to complement that orangey tone that I had. So I used a bit of blue sky in the scenery in the background of the buildings. And I think those two colors together just, oh, I love them. They just really make me feel warm and fuzzy. <laughs> um, and then on the right hand page, I wanted to look at some more animals. I just felt like because there was a lot of buildings going on, I just wanted something alive in there. So I had a look at some Yemen animals and one that I came across that I sort of fell in love with is the Yemen monitor. And people might think I'm weird, but one of my favorite animals is the Komodo dragon. Um, I was, I think I watched a documentary when I was very young and I was just fascinated by them. And I remember a bunch of facts from this documentary, but I actually haven't Googled them to see if my memory is correct. I just remember hearing that the saliva, if it touched a human, it, you would be dead within an hour. <laughs> and I don't know if that's true. So I'm going to have to go and Google that right now. Um, but yeah, I love Komodo dragons. And when I saw this monitor, I'm just fascinated by them. So I thought, yes, I'm going to do this Yemen monitor. Now it's endemic to Yemen. Um, and there's lots of different species of these monitor lizards. So its, um, it's proper name is Varanus yemenensis, which I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but that is what it is. And I thought I would add this little guy down on the bottom right hand corner. And I also just Googled Komodo dragon saliva and I was wrong. It is not going to kill you in an hour. For years, they thought it was the bacteria in the saliva that would kill people and their prey. Um, but it turns out that it, they've got venom glands between the teeth. So just thought I'd correct myself there. I drew him just using my fine liners and then just did a little bit of stippling to create some um, shading on him and just kind of basic little line work. Um, no color, just kept him blank. And then what I did is I, once I'd added the stamps in later, I did not realize, but it really looks like he is drinking from the glass of my stamp. So that was unintentional, but I kind of like it. It's quite cute. Um, so yeah, and then that was this page complete. And now we're on to the final page for the weekly spreads. And this one I decided to go with one of my favorite things to draw, which is another special building. But I really find these mosques to be just so beautiful. I did a mosque in the Oman setup, I think it was, but my gosh, they're just stunning examples of architecture. I'm just fascinated by them. So this one in particular is called the Al Saleh Mosque. It is the largest in Yemen and it's based in the capital city of Sana'a. And the size of this thing is incredible. It's 27,300 square meters in size. And it's the building actually cost 60 million US dollars to build. So an incredible amount of money. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very big tourist spot. And I, for one, would definitely love to see one of these massive mosques in real life. So yeah, so I decided to draw this one across the base of my bullet journal. I really like doing that um, just to mix things up rather than having everything vertical all the time. So I've gone across the two pages just with my Pigma Micron stuck to just the basic black and gold for this spread. Um, and then something I did differently this time was actually moved my daily boxes into more of an odd shaped grid system. It's not symmetrical. They're just kind of, you know, plonked here and there where I felt it would work. So I just created the seven boxes across the spread. And then later on, I realized that I am totally missing the 31st of May and I didn't count properly. I should have put eight on this spread, but I don't know what happens with me. My mind just goes blank when it comes to dates. I always mess it up for some reason, um, but not to worry. I will just add a page soon on the back of this um, that has an additional day. Um, unless I put it in my next setup, I'm not really sure. I think I'll just do another page because you know, I'm gonna have spare pages in this book anyway. So I will do that next time. Anyway, now I'm rambling. So this is the finished spread for this and we'll have a quick flick back through the pages that we just set up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. And don't forget to click the notification bell so that you can be notified of when my videos go live.
Next week, I'll be putting up a draw with me video. I asked my subscribers what word they would associate with Yemen. Now they've seen a little bit more about it. And I've decided to go with the one that came up a few times, which is the word coffee. So I'm going to create an art piece inspired by coffee and see how we go. So don't forget to come back for that next week. And I hope you guys have a great weekend and week ahead. I will see you then. Bye bye. Okay. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I don't know if you've met my little helper here. This is Theo. Um, he's gonna help me choose the countries for next month. So before we get started on the weeklies, I'm gonna do, I'm going to do that. It's kind of difficult, you're distracting me. <laughs> Maybe I should put him down. Are you gonna sit still? Okay.